Today, I'm going to show you how to destroy all the data on your old hard drive so you can recycle it. Stay tuned. Have you recently gotten a new computer? Or do you have a stack of computers in your closet because you're afraid your personal data is going to get out? When you pull a hard drive out of a computer, the data remains on the hard drive. So you really don't want to just throw these things in the garbage or bring them to a recycle center with your data still on them. You want to make sure to destroy this data before you recycle your computer or throw it away. You could even reuse these hard drives or you can give them away to somebody that might need them. However, you want to destroy your data before you do that. Today, I'm going to go over a couple different ways of destroying data. I have a whole stack of drives here that I'm going to have to destroy, so I figured I'd make a video on how to do this. Right here, I have 65 drives. These drives all came out of computers from customers that I either upgraded to SSDs or pulled out for other reasons. Maybe the hard drive was bad. But there's still data on these drives that needs to be destroyed. So in order to do that, I'm going to show you two different ways. One of them is an easy way, and the other one is a little bit more difficult, but you have a little bit more control over. Now before doing this, I would recommend pulling any hard drive out of your computer that you don't want to wipe data off of, just to be safe. Even though you can choose which drives to erase and which drives not to, it's still a good idea idea not to leave drives in your computer that you don't intend on destroying the data on because this is permanent. There's no way to recover from this. If you destroy the data on a drive that you don't have backed up or that you need the data off of, you're never getting it back. Not even a data recovery company will be able to recover your data after doing this. So to start out with, I'm going to show you the hard way first. So to do this, what you're going to need is a USB drive or CD-ROM and download your favorite Linux live distribution. Any live distribution will work. Just go search Google for Linux Live CD and then put it onto a USB drive. Now that we have our USB drive, the first thing that we need to do is plug it into the back of the computer just like this and then fire the computer up. Now what we're going to need to do is push the key on your keyboard that corresponds with allowing you to boot your computer from a USB drive. On this motherboard, it's F8, but other computers, it could be other key combinations. So refer to your computer's manufacturer to find out which key combination you need to push. Now, what we're gonna do is select my USB drive and hit enter. It's gonna take a minute for this to boot up. So I'll meet you in the live CD. For this, I'm using Parted Magic. This is a live CD that's meant for data recovery and things of that nature. Um, I use this a lot when I'm troubleshooting computers. This is actually a retail program, so it's not a free Linux distribution. This is one that you actually have to pay for. Um, it's a great program, so if you guys want to get it, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But any live Linux CD will work on this. You don't have to buy a retail live CD if you um, don't want to. This one is just a really good one that I use. And the reason why I'm using this one is because this is just the one I always use. But what I'm going to show you now is going to work no matter what live CD you use. Um, in this one, it actually has a function to erase disks, but I'm not going to use that because not all live CDs have that function. I'm going to do what all live CDs would have. So the first thing that we're going to do is open up a terminal and then in this terminal, we want to find out which drives are connected to the computer. So to do that, we type ls blk space dash a. And this is going to give us a list of our of our storage devices. Now, as you can see down here, this is, these are the ones that we're looking for. So we have SDA and SDB. And then both of these drives have partitions on them. Now, if you look, you can see the size of these partitions. So SDA1, which is the primary partition on the first hard drive attached is 931 gigs. It's essentially one terabyte. And the second drive, the first partition on that one is 114 gigs. That's my 120 gig USB thumb drive. And so what I'm going to do now is to show you that this one here is a thumb drive. I'm actually going to pull the thumb drive out of the computer, 
So we do that and then we run the same command again, you'll see that SDB is now gone. So you wanna make sure that before you do this, you pull out whatever drive you don't wanna destroy data on, just you know to avoid mistakes. Obviously, we're gonna run this command on each individual drive, so it doesn't really matter if the drive is attached or not as long as you don't run this command for that drive, but it's best just to pull it out. So the first thing that we're gonna do now is we want to type we want to make sure that this drive here isn't mounted so if for whatever reason this happens to be mounted this won't work so to do that we're going to type sudo umount mount slash dev for device and then sda1 and then dash l and hit enter and not mounted, so the drive wasn't mounted. So now the next thing that we do, this is the one that's actually gonna destroy the data. So we're gonna type sudo dd if equals forward slash device slash u random. We're basically gonna be writing random data to the drive and then space of equals forward slash device forward slash s s d a and then space b s equals 10 meg and then we're going to type status equals progress. Status equals progress is only going to give us a readout so we'll know that it's actually working. So then we're going to hit enter. And there we go. Now what DD is going to be doing now is it's actually going to be writing data over the entire disk. So it's, it's basically random data that's being written to the disk. So you're not just deleting files. You'll, you're actually writing random data onto each sector of the disk. And so data recovery at this point is absolutely impossible. There's no way you're going to be able to get data off this drive once it finishes. Now, this is going to take a really long time. It could take in excess of five or six hours to write through the whole drive. It just depends on how fast the drive is. So it's a good idea to start this and just let it run all night. Um, when it's finished, it's basically going to give you the console back. So it's going to look just like this. So I'm going to hit control C to cancel it right now. And there we go. So now that it's canceled, you can see here that it gives you back the console. Once it gives you back the console, it means it's done. Um, obviously, it isn't right now because I canceled it. But when you're doing it, if you just let it run through until you get the console back, then you'll know the drive is then nuked and you won't have to worry about throwing it away at this point. And that there is the hard way to destroy all the data on your drive. Now, I'm gonna show you the easy way to do it. And for that, we need to make another live USB disk. And for this, we're gonna use a program called DBAN. It stands for Derek's Boot and Nuke. And basically, this program here is intended for no other reason than to destroy data on your computer. So I'm gonna boot the system off of this drive right here, and I'll meet you in the operating system. Now the first screen that we're gonna see is the DBAN warning screen. It says that this software irrecoverably destroys your data. And this is really important because any drive that you have connected to this computer could potentially be completely wiped. So if you have any important data on any of these drives, pull them out or unplug them now before you run this program. So what we need to do to boot up is hit enter and it's gonna take a minute to boot up, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this section right here until we get into the operating system. All right, now that we're booted up, we're faced with this screen right here. What I went ahead and did is I added some more hard drives to this thing so I can show you the potential of this program right here. As you can see with these drives that are installed, it gives us our list of disks and partitions in the bottom section here. And you can see our first one is our USB drive. This is the USB drive that we use to boot into this operating system. And then the following sections are all the drives that are attached to the computer. I went ahead and installed four one terabyte Western Digital drives just for this example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the disks that we wanna wipe out. And this is one of the reasons why it was so important to not have a hard drive in here that you don't wanna wipe out. Because as you can see from this list, it doesn't really give us a lot of information other than the physical description of the drive itself. So if you have a couple of one terabyte drives in your computer and one of them you want the data destroyed on, 
and the other one you don't, it's really hard to tell the difference between which drive you want to save and which drive you don't. So it's best just to unplug it before you actually run this program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and hit the space bar on each drive that I want to wipe. So we're going to go down this list and I'm going to select all four of these drives. And then once you select the drives that you want to wipe, all you have to do is hit the F10 key and it'll destroy the drives. So you go just like this and there you go. Now what it's doing is the same process that we went through before It is writing random data on each sector of all four drives. It's just doing them all at the same time. And the reason why this one's easier is because you can still do the same function the hard way, but you have to open you know, four terminal windows in order to destroy four drives if you want to run them all at the same time. Now, this is going to take some time to finish. Like I said before, right now it's saying it's going to take about eight hours to finish. So I would do this and just let it run overnight and by the morning it should be done. Now, there's a couple considerations that you need to take into account here and I have to make this warning again. This is permanent. You will never be able to get the data back off of these hard drives once you run this program on it. Once you do either of these steps, whether you do it the hard way or the easy way, not even a data recovery specialist will be able to recover this data. However, when it comes to your hard drives, your old drives, these have your personal data on them. So just pulling this drive out of your computer does not get rid of the data. This data can be recovered and it can be used by scammers and identity thieves in order to steal your identity. So what you want to do is you want to make sure to destroy this data before you get rid of these drives. Now, I know a lot of people and they will say, well, I'm just going to bury it in the backyard or I'm going to shoot a hole in it. And to be honest with you, it's not enough. You can recover a hard drive that has been physically damaged. There's forensic data recovery specialists that actually specialize in recovering data from hard drives that have been intentionally destroyed. A lot of times when people are using computers to commit crimes, they will use a form of physical destruction to try to destroy evidence in legal cases. And there are data recovery specialists that can actually get that data back. Now, is someone going to go to that extent to recover data from just a private user? You know, probably not. There, You probably don't have to worry about that. And chances are, if you physically destroy the drive, you're probably okay. Okay. However, there's nothing wrong with these drives in many cases. They just have your personal data on them. So by destroying the data on the drive, you actually leave the drive so you can use it for another project. You can give it away to somebody that might need it, or you can use it in the future if you ever need a blank hard drive for something. Like a video that I recently did, we built a file server out of a bunch of these drives. So there's lots of things that you can do with old hard drives rather than just throwing them and filling up a landfill. You can recycle these and use them for many different purposes. While we're here, I just want to share with you that I also have a website at cybercputech.com. Please visit that site. It has all the show notes to all the videos on this channel. And at some point, I'm actually going to start selling the merch that I wear in these videos on that site. But in the meantime, you can always get my shirts in the link in the description below. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I have a Twitter account at CyberCPU as well as CyberCPU on Instagram as well. If this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. And while you're here, take a look at a couple of these videos. Have a great day.